As we mentioned earlier, federal investigators have executed a search warrant at Rudy Giuliani's Manhattan home. They reportedly seized all his personal electronic devices. For more on this developing story, let's bring in CBS News legal contributor Rebecca Royfe. Hi, Rebecca. Great to see you. So search warrants aren't just executed out of nowhere. What more can you tell us about what investigators had to prove to get these search warrants used to raid Mr. Giuliani's apartment? Right. Um, search warrants are a court order, and the prosecutors, when they get any search warrant, have to show probable cause to believe that there will be evidence of a crime at a particular location. Now, Rudy Giuliani is also a lawyer, and that creates more hurdles for the prosecutor because there's protection against attorneys that on behalf of their clients. And so in order to get a search warrant of a lawyer's office, um, it, you have to get approval from the highest level, and you also have to show that other means have been ineffective um, in obtaining this kind of information. So that tells us a lot about this investigation that's been going on for a long time um, and suggests some things that we don't know for sure, but, uh, you know, whether or not Rudy Giuliani has been fully cooperating, whether the prosecutors believe that, because if they did, they wouldn't need to execute this warrant. They would just send a subpoena and ask him and his lawyers to give them the necessary documents. So, you know, there's a question mark there as to whether there's some suggestion that Rudy Giuliani may not be have been fully forthcoming with, you know, the documents that are on his computer. And so do we know what exactly federal officials uh, were looking for in Rudy Giuliani's apartment? Do we know what was taken from his place of residence? So, again, I think, you know, they did search the apartment, but my guess is they were searching largely his devices and what they're searching for is documents. And the, you know, ongoing investigation that we've been aware of is about whether or not he was illegally lobbying the Trump administration on behalf of these Ukraine officials um, during the time at which he was in the Ukraine seeking to dig up dirt on Hunter Biden in order to, uh, in order to hurt the Trump administration's political opponents opponent at the time. So the question is whether or not Rudy Giuliani violated any laws in doing so. And obviously, you know, they've been working with his lawyer, I believe, and with him. Um, but this is an additional step that shows that they've really ramped up this investigation and that they had to show to a court, you know, not only that they had this, they had reason to believe that they might find evidence there, but also that they, you know, tried other means and that the other means were not successful. And Rebecca, as you said, you know, they have been talking to Mr. Giuliani about this for a while. How long has this investigation into uh, Giuliani been underway? And do you think he anticipated this raid? The investigation has been ongoing from, you know, from public reports for quite some time, you know, back until before the first impeachment. So the question is, um, you know, your second question, whether they were aware of the execution of the search warrant. No, I'm absolutely sure they were not. I mean, the whole point of a search warrant is that it takes you by surprise and that the authorities, you know, in, in, a, in a white collar case like this, very frequently you don't use a search warrant. In fact, you just go to the lawyer and you go to the person or you go to companies and you request documents from them and build your case together that way. Um, this does, you know, lead one to question whether they wonder um, if Rudy Giuliani is being fully forthcoming in in that investigation, because this is a way of obtaining information when a person is unaware <laughs> that you're about to obtain the information. So okay. my guess is that the prosecutors were somewhat suspicious that there's something that he hasn't been turning over voluntarily and that they tried to get it this way in a surprise way so that he was unable to manipulate and, you know, turn over just the documents that he wanted to turn over. I mean, you know, nothing, we don't know that for sure. It's impossible to know for sure what the government knows and what, um, you know, what, what they don't, but that that's a reasonable inference from the fact that they executed a search warrant here rather than just sending him a subpoena and asking him to turn over particular documents. The whole purpose of that is to surprise him, to um, take documents right. when he's unaware so that he can't destroy them beforehand. So do you think it's possible... Do you think it's possible, um, Rebecca, that Giuliani was lulled into a little bit of complacency because under the Trump administration, the Department of Justice had been blocked from investigating him? And of course, that is not the case with this current uh, administration and Justice Department. So do you think perhaps he had a little bit of a false sense of security? 
you know, it's possible. You know, I, I think this is a, a rather unusual step. So I don't think it would have been unreasonable for him to think that the uh, investigation was proceeding, you know, in the new Department of Justice. And he probably was aware that it was and hadn't been concluded. But I, I think it probably did take him surprise, by surprise that they've um, escalated it to this level. I mean, this, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that the, an indictment is coming. It doesn't mean that he's necessarily guilty of any kind of criminal conduct, but it does mean that the investigation has proceeded to a pretty aggressive phase and that the prosecution has right. a significant amount of information to be able to convince a court to do this. Right. Okay. So if the investigation, and of course it's a big if, everyone is innocent until proven guilty, but if the investigation reveals Giuliani broke any lobbying laws during his tenure as former President Trump's lawyer, what implications could that have for him as well as for the former president? I mean, you know, this is criminal exposure. It's serious. You know, this is a former United States attorney and the former, um, it, attorney to the president. So that would be earth shattering news. I mean, this would be very, very significant to him personally, whether it would have any repercussions for the president is another question. I mean, if the president, there's a big if there, you know, was the president involved in any of these activities? Was Rudy Giuliani acting at his behest? We don't know any of the of that, but certainly if he's charged with a crime, the government would look into whether or not there's anybody else who was directing him or involved with him. And if there's anybody else, then and then they would pursue that lead. If that person, you know, was the former president, he no longer has the protection he had as a president that sitting presidents, you know, are traditionally not subject to criminal prosecution or not subject to indictment. So he no longer has that cloak of immunity and he could face um, criminal repercussions. But again, there's so many hypotheticals and so many so that I think it's really premature to think, you know, oh, they're going to show up at President Trump's, you know, former President Trump's door in Mar-a-Lago, um, you know, with handcuffs. I just don't think that we're there, there yet because there are so many different steps that would have to come before that. All right. Well, Rebecca Royfe, thank you so much for joining us. As always, we appreciate your legal insight. Thank you.